Bonjour, I'm Eric Lathrop. And I'm Paul Marshall. And we are from Boyd and Global Executive Search and very proud sponsors of CEO of the Year this year. Outstanding leaders have never been more important than they are now, and my colleagues and I at Boyden have never been more impressed by what our local CEO community has accomplished in these unprecedented times. Good work, Ottawa. Un grand merci. Well, I moved from Montreal, actually, um, for this role, and I had no gray hair, and uh, my big passion was software engineering. And so when I joined, uh, when I joined Canaxis, um, the first thing I realized was how bright the engineers that I joined were. Um, it was ac actually a very humbling experience um, when I met the engineers behind, uh, behind the technology. So I, uh, my wife and I, my wife lived in Montreal uh, pretty much all her life. So this was a huge move for us. This was not comfortable. Uh, moving here to Ottawa, she felt like this was a, a you know very far away from family, uh, but you know it was an adventure, and uh, you know for me it was thrilling to be part of this incredibly talented team. Twenty six years ago, Canaxis was a really really interesting boutique. And uh, they did a lot of very custom work for some of the world's largest manufacturers. But I wouldn't call it a product company back then. It was more of a services company um, and more of a custom software shop uh, back then. And when I joined, that's when things shifted. And we transformed ourselves back in 1994 into a true software company, true product company. Yeah, it's interesting. I certainly didn't do it on purpose. Um, there's a couple of things, you know, when I reflect now, why did I do all of those things? Um, because I remember them being quite spontaneous as decisions. So I grew up in a military family, and, and one of the things that happens when you grow up in a military family is you move a lot. Um, you know, my father could come home on a Friday, and, and he would say, we're moving. I'd say, when? Monday. You know, so it's, it's made me quite resilient. I'd have to be ready for any challenge. I tend to lean in when there are, uh, you know, difficult situations or problems to solve. And so in every case, the company was at a point where they really needed somebody to solve a particularly difficult challenge. And so they asked me, do you want to try this out? I'd raise my hand, say, sure, I'll try that. And I would keep going. Um, and so I think that's how it, you know, my experiences came to be. Our, our previous CEO, Douglas Colbeth, who's a phenomenal mentor for me and a coach for me, um, you know, he taught me everything. And um, I, I still remember to this day, as I was progressing, uh, he said, John, you'll know I'm really upset with you if I make you the CFO. <laughs> so I've never been a CFO. There's a couple of key elements behind our personality. Every company has a personality. And ours has just been growing as, as you, and maturing, as you can imagine. One of those key elements is we learned how to be profitable, like on purpose. I think profit is a muscle. And like any muscle, it has to be exercised. If you can't continuously and consistently generate profit, um, it becomes diff difficult to sustain growth. And so we learned that very early on. I, I still remember back in 2005 saying those words. We should learn how to be a profitable SaaS company on purpose. Let's go learn that skill. And it's become part of our uh, DNA. Like we don't know another way to be. And that uh, confidence in, in knowing how to generate profit in this world of SaaS uh, gave us the confidence to continuously push that growth uh, that broke growth curve over, over the years. This was a very interesting time in our history. First, we didn't have to go public. We had no debt. We had lots of cash in the bank. And use of proceeds was going to be the business. We're just going to continue to grow the business. But we had longstanding shareholders. And so um, that was one of the reasons. The second was it was more of a marketing event. We wanted, to, we wanted to put Canaxis on the map, on the world stage. 
And that's harder to do when you're not public. So we looked at that, um, that very much less about finances and more about marketing, putting Canaxis on the map. We knew we were going to uh, we were going to start to market and sell into Asia, into Europe, uh, and obviously growing in, in, uh, in North America. So those were really the motives behind it. Every other case, um, when uh, Mr. Colbeth said, I, I, have a, I have a job for you, <laughs> I need your help to do this, I, I would lean in. Uh, whatever it takes, and, you know, put me in coach and I'll do my best on the field. When this one came up, I, I did lean back um, for a few reasons. One, we were already public at the time. Uh, two, I'd never had any aspirations to do this role, ever. I was quite shocked when they asked. Um, but I, you know, maybe I should have been realizing, you know, people do retire over time and so who, who takes the job? And so I didn't say yes um, right away. The board came and, and asked, and they said, it's a risk. You've never been a CEO, let alone a CEO of a public company. But I also realized that, well, that's true of pretty much every CEO in the world. There's a day you aren't one, and then you go and, and drive that, you know, you drive that role. Um, and, and ultimately, it came down to this. It was going to be a risk either way. If an outsider were to come in and become the CEO, they could poison the soup. They, they didn't have any of the pedigree. Right? Any of the pedigree or the history or the passion or the caring for the people and the caring for the customers. And so I basically decided to bet on myself and say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step in that role. I'll learn as much as I can and uh, do the best job I can possibly do. Yeah, so for myself, um, obviously, I, I, I wanted to do, um, you know, the previous CEO and the board proud. They were taking a risk. Uh, placing a bet, if you will, on me. And, um, you know, the weight on your shoulders is, is quite uh, impressive, I will say. It's one thing just to say that this is what you do now, but the weight on your shoulders is quite impressive. And so I, uh, I wanted to do them proud. Um, I'd say, you know, ultimately I wanted to carry the tradition of growth. And I, I wanted to make this uh, Canaxis to become the most iconic, successful tech company in Canada in all of history, period. It will be the most iconic company in Canadian history. That's, that's, uh, that's sort of the, the goal. Now, subsequent to that, I think financial performance and financial success is the side effect, not the target. It's the side effect of doing amazing things for the planet. So at the same time, I, I hope that people will look at Canaxis as, as, as having a profound impact on, on the sustainability of this, of this planet. And in, we're in supply chain. Uh, supply chain is as old as humanity and it will be, uh, it will be around for as long as humanity is around. So we, we do have a profound impact on eliminating waste in this planet and I hope, I hope we get recognized for that. Really, I would say we are revolutionizing the way planning supply chain planning happens in this world. It's, it's an absolute pivotal, piv pivotal moment uh, for supply chain. And uh, what, we're, you know, what we're being recognized for is driving hyper agility where agility didn't exist before. And in this pandemic, in fact, Canaxis has never been more relevant, ever. The entire planet has been shocked, if you will. Uh, every supply chain is being affected simultaneously in every vector, every size of company, every country. And so uh, today, more than ever, they're looking for, you know, I, I'd say a competency in responding to change and driving hyper agility in their supply chain. I think it, it, uh, I think it will be, and there's a, there's a few reasons for that. First, um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll get asked, well, you know, what, what's the likelihood that everyone, you know, every manufacturer in the world is going to follow your philosophy here? And my answer is always the same, 100%. 100% of every manufacturer is going to be forced to, trans, to you know, to, to, to uh, improve their supply chain, right, to transform their supply chain. I just don't know when, right? So, some might be three months, some might be three years, some might be ten. Longer than that? Maybe the companies won't be around. Their competitors will have, have uh, you know, will have, have, have beat them. 
Um, but I think this pandemic more than ever has shown uh, manufacturers what it feels like when your agility muscle atrophies. And so they're asking, well, how do I strengthen this part of our business? You know, we've been focused so much on accuracy, the pursuit of the perfect plan, and that's been to the detriment of agility. And so I think it is giving us a lot more uh, credibility in the market. This technique is, is gaining traction. I am a, um, you know, an unabashed, proud um, Canadian and Ottawan. I, I, I love this city. Uh, there was a time this city was viewed as Silicon Valley North. And, uh, you know, we might have lost a bit of that tarnish. Well, it's coming back. And uh, I'm engaged in as many activities as possible to, to you know, to shine the bell, if you will, uh, to bring um, tech uh, excellence back, back to Ottawa. So we're, we're obviously, we're, we're uh, expanding. Our headquarters is being built now, our new headquarters. We ran out of space. Since January 1, we have, we have grown staff by over 50% even during this pandemic. So we are, you know, uh, pedal to the metal, if you will. Uh, and, uh, and again, I, you know, it goes back to this, this goal of building the most iconic, successful tech company to ever exist in this, in this country. I actually don't believe in a permanent work from home strategy. I think that will ultimately fail. Um, I just believe that. I think humans are social creatures. We're social creatures. And, and to work from home for seven days, no problem. Seven weeks, well, we probably handle that. Seven months, we're starting to see some cracks. Seven years, you will erode your culture. You won't be able to point to it. And that's the problem. So I, um, I, I actually believe people are always going to be stronger together, not apart. I think cultures grow as a result of humans being with one another. I miss people. I, I, I'm, I'm struggling living in a completely two-dimensional uh, life now. Everything is on television, on, a, on, my, on my webcam. It's very challenging. Uh, you don't get the full human experience. So uh, at Canaxis, we have a very strong culture. I won't say it will be fully work from home. I think we'll end up with a hybrid because we've shown to be extremely efficient and effective working from home. Um, but, but this new headquarters is going to be a magnet. People will want to be there. They'll want to be with one another. You know, my family really started when I met my wife back in 1982. Um, so I met her 38 years ago. And uh, we were in Montreal, very young. Um, she's very academic. I was not uh, at the time. And, uh, but we started our lives together then. Um, we were married in 1988. We have two boys. Well, they're men now. Uh, my youngest is 26, Nicholas. My oldest is uh, 29, Alex. And, um, and we're blessed to still have them in our, in our home. Um, Nicholas is autistic. <clears throat> he is um, high functioning. Actually works for Canaxis as a software tester. And my older son is doing his PhD in, in, uh, in chemistry at the uh, University of Ottawa. We do a lot of family ritual things. Uh, you know, my wife is Italian, and, and let me tell you, family is everything in an Italian household, and I embrace it. Um, I think there's no better feeling than when you have a very, very strong bond and unit with family. We, we never eat apart, like ever. We don't have dinner unless we're all having dinner, period, full stop. And, and so... Um, yeah, I, I hold a lot. Uh, I, I, think, I think family is everything. I, I also say this to employees. Nothing that happens at Canaxis is more important than what happens at home, ever. That's how I live my life, and that's how I would expect everyone else to live theirs. It kind of stems from, uh, I guess, being the father of an autistic son. Once you become the father of an autistic son, that's it for life. You're, that, that becomes part of you. And there were so many things I thought Nick wouldn't do that he actually did. I thought he'd never drive. He has a driver's license and he Ubers me to work. Uh, he's a phenomenal driver. And so the thing about autism at work is a lot of people think about autism as something that happens to children. Oh, I know somebody with a young child or you know, a young boy. Uh, but they grow up to be adults. And unfortunately in our system, after they turn 18, they graduate to the couch. 
Now, many of these people are incredibly gifted, very talented, very intellectual. You just have to learn to interview them differently. So this is by no means a charity. This is not a token. This is basically pushing the boundaries of diversity into neurodiversity and learning how to interview people that are neurodiverse and bringing them in. And let me tell you, it's done wonders at Canaxis. We made a pledge to hire 1% on the, on the autism spectrum. We're closer to 2% right now. Um, and it's been a, a wonderful program. And again, not a charity. These people are, are, are driving great value, uh, building friendships, and they're enriching our lives, uh, just being part of, part of Canaxis. I started playing drums when I was very young. I was a very young teen, um, maybe 13 or 14 even. Um, and I'm 58, so you can do the math. And I, I love to perform. I love, the way I, uh, I, I love the way playing music feels. And everybody has a thing they do where they feel most like themselves. That, for me, when I'm playing drums, I feel most like the most natural state to be in. Um, and, and music itself, um, you know, the expression of sound, uh, for me anyway, is very emotional, uh, regardless of genre. And, uh, and so it's a lifelong passion. Uh, and now I'm, I'm thrilled to be learning how to produce music. That's a whole new skill. Um, and under COVID, especially uh, COVID times with uh, the band that I, that I have, everyone recording their bits at home and then doing the mastering in the studio, it's been a, it's been a wonderful hobby. And, and, I, and I think everybody should have a passion like this outside of work that they can turn to.